Hello, Julia, and welcome to Tea Talks. Did you bring have, a tea yeah, with you? Well, is this, this is the cup um, oh. with my tea in. Hang on. Oh. I'm advertising that. Here is my, here is my, this is my tea of choice. Um, <laughs> looks back to front here. You can see it, all right? Um, yeah, famous British brand Twinings. And this is, what is their top end brand? This is uh, Strong English Breakfast Tea from 1706. So, uh, I've drunk this for a number of years and <laughs> I start my day with two big cups of this and it gets me going. So that's, wow. uh, that's my secret. My secret. You're just giving away <laughs> your biggest secret. In a way, that's, that's worth a lot of money. Um, All right. I like, I like Twinings. Um, yeah, it's a very yeah. posh uh, tea brand, a bit more expensive than, than some of the others. Um, it's a premium. It's a premium British tea tea brand, yeah. And um, Definitely. For many years, it was made. It was sort of packaged up in Hampshire as well, just up the road. So. Yeah, not far um, from which the School of Art. Well, interestingly, um, as you said in your um, biography, um, that you were born near Highfield campus. So my first question, my first question to you is, um, what is it about? Southampton or, or Winchester that you that you love so much that's kept you here for so long well probably because I was I was born here and uh, educated here doing my schooling in Southampton and because family are here I mean, my my family are been in Southampton and uh, for many many years so um, I have moved around I've lived in London I've lived in other parts of the UK but Southampton is home and it's it's where I know a lot of lot of people when I had the opportunity to move back uh, to this part of the country back in the 1990s I sort of jumped at it so um, yeah here I am. Okay um, so you have quite a number of roles um, could you explain to us exactly all the different roles that you do? <laughs> how long have you got <laughs> <laughs> okay. i knew this was going to be a big question all right well let, let me try and um let me try and break it down um some some year i was for many years i worked for some um quite big agencies as an employed member of staff i was a director of um quite a big agency in southampton i was a managing director of another agency in southampton and about 15 years or so ago i decided that i wanted to run my own business and I set up a consultancy that works in advertising, but mainly working on uh, helping agencies win new clients, so pitching and acquiring new clients. And, and that was quite successful for a number of years. And I had a, had a partner at the time and um, it was, it, yeah, it, went, it went very well. And, but what that allowed me to do is to, once I'd set up one business that was successful, I thought, ooh, I haven't, I, I started to think of other things that I was also interested in that I was able to do so because once you're not you know given all your time in a full employment role you can you have flexibility um, you're not committed nine to five five days a week to one business you can actually go off and you know you can call your own shots you can do what you can basically do what you like as long as you're earning enough money to keep yourself together so I had sort of achieved that and then what I was what I was then able to do is to think oh I'd, I'd be, like to have a look at this and see if I can get going something here so what I ended up doing is carried on doing some consultancy work but I ended up doing um, I had an idea about teaching enterprise and, and in schools what I've been able to do is over the last few years is to sort of build up a sort of portfolio of different things that sort of makes up one full-time job based on the things that I I like and I feel that I've got something to offer at and actually because you've carried on and you're not full-time in education and you're still getting that industry experience so that must keep you quite up to date with everything that's happening yeah. in the industry which yeah, is quite I, nice because it feeds yes. into your, your oh, lectures, very, I guess. Very, very much so. I mean, I am more a practitioner than I am an academic. What I can offer the students is that 30 odd years of, of practical experience working in the business. And as you say, you know, I still have that connection. And current experience as well. Yeah, that's right. So I You're still not talking that. about lots of years ago. You're talking about now and what's going on as well which yes, is really I, I, important because yeah. it changes 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, all the time. So um, you mentioned uh, 30, but I actually read 40 years. You've well, got 40 so years experience. It will, be, it will be, I started my first job in advertising in January 1981. So be 40 years in January. <laughs> okay, so around 39. Um, yeah, 30, for the mathematicians amongst you. Yeah, yeah um, so you've been working in advertising for a long time. <laughs> Should we say that? And what I wanted to know was, what has been your most successful advertising job? And have you ever made a bad advert or a bad decision? And what went wrong? How did you overcome it? So two questions. Oh, crikey. Most successful um, moment and probably your worst moment. Oh God, um, successful things. Well, some, some years ago, and going back quite a while now, back in the 1980s, um, I was involved in, I used to do lots of financial services advertising, you know, sort of banks and insurance companies, etc. And I was working for, as the advertising manager for a big, big insurance company. And we had a, a, a major sort of campaign. About the time in the 1980s, lots of um, UK public sector operations were privatized. And we came up with the idea of selling um, selling a unit trust, which is a type of financial product, as a as a in, as a pseudo privatisation to take advantage of that. And it was called the Ro the Royal Event. And um, the idea was we would position this product almost as a, pri uh, a privatisation, which would be you know, very very successful. Um, and it worked. And it worked extremely well. We we sold. Um, we we took on in a in about a month. We recruited one hundred and thirty five thousand people who who invested. Um, I think it was in excess of a thousand a thousand pounds in in our in in our unit trust. And at the time, it was the most successful launch ever um, of that type wow. of product. So um, and it was quite a big thing in the industry because it was very uh, unorthodox. We got a lot of a lot of people sort of griping what we'd done. I think they just thought it was a smart thing. They wish they'd done it, and we got there first. So we did this, and that was that was very successful. So that was that was one thing that you know I'm sort of proud of that I was involved um, on, in that process. In terms of things that went wrong, oh god, probably loads of stuff really. The problem. <laughs> The problem with advertising, and particularly traditional advertising, where you're using things like TV commercials and, and, and things that are not sort of like directly, directly responsive, um, sometimes it's difficult to um, sometimes it's difficult to actively know what you've done. You know, you can post do post research and everything, but you're not quite sure whether all that effort that you've made is um, is going to be um, going to be effective. So a lot of what you do, you think, oh, this is the right thing to do, and you get it out there, you put it out there. And then hopefully it does something, but you don't always know, um, to be honest, whether it does or not. So there's quite quite a lot of things. Um, God, what do you think? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me give you an example. A big boo boo. A big boo boo. A big boo boo. Um, I've made that many. I, I haven't. I haven't. I, I, I haven't really made that made that many. Um, okay, that's good. There was no. There was one. Um, we. Some years ago, again, I think I was working for the same insurance company at the time. We made a we made a very expensive TV commercial. Um, I think it cost about half a million pounds, which is a lot of money at the time. Um, very very expensive. And we to to do it, we employed a one of the most sort of radical film TV commercial produ um, producers to to actually make it. And um, he what he actually came up with was was so weird and out there. You know, it was it was but ostensibly a script that we'd approved but it was so kind of weird that we, we could never actually run it and we had to get basically he got sacked we had to get someone in to sort of make up the footage right. you know, what he tried right. to turn it into something which was actually we could put out there and that um, must have been really, time, really difficult spent, yeah we spent yeah we it was we spent half a million pounds making this thing and it was like oh god we this is rubbish <laughs> well, <laughs> well it wasn't rubbish it was just it just didn't fit you know it wasn't our brand Right. So we had to, um, you know, we ourselves and the agency that were working on it at the time, we had to sort of put it right. And uh, 
that, that, that caused some angst. That was a fairly big traumatic thing at the time because you, know, mm. spent, this, you spent all your company's money and you produced something that you couldn't use. <laughs> and then you managed, did you manage to use it? Did you manage to piece it together? Yes, we, we, we put, we, we, we repaired it and put it out that it could go out. But so it wasn't completely wasted, but we did waste a lot of time and there's lots of arguments. Mm. Um, we probably mm. wasted quite considerable sums of money going down that route. But that must um, have taught you a lot, maybe. What a, um, Was there anything you could have done differently? We were persuaded by the agency that we're working with who came up with the idea to, to go down this route. Um, and I'm not sure we were all that totally confident it was the right thing to do. Um, one of the things that um, uh, there's often a tension between the agency that comes up with the creative ideas and the company, the brand that's actually running it. You know, the agency often wants to do something which is quite radical and out there and, and you know, will win them awards, you know. Um, mm. And usually, the, often the client, the, the brand that's paying for it, is more conservative. And there's this tension between the two. Um, yeah, the agency wants to do something which they believe is creative and effective, you know, will be effective. Um, but they're not, it's not their money that is being spent. It's the right. company, right. the organisation that's spending the money. And they have to be as confident as they can be that the money is going to be well spent. At the heart of the advertising relationship is agency produce the ideas create commercials create the, the material and then the people are paying for it they're two right. different people um, they have hopefully similar objectives but they might not be entirely the same mm -hmm. and there's this creative tension that goes on um, and it doesn't always work out particularly particularly well so yeah so one of the things that people go into advertising will look depending on what role you're playing whether you're the people buying the services in the creative work for a brand or your people supplying it as the the agency who tend to come up with the creative ideas and execute them then um yeah your, your role will be different and, and judgment is quite important mm. um so Thinking about ideas then, do you think that somebody can be, do you think that it's something that is a natural talent or do you think good ideas can be taught? Can you teach someone to have good ideas? Because I think advertising does come down to having those ideas. Um, so is it a natural thing or can someone learn how to have good ideas? Um. I think both actually. I think some people are just find it easy to come up with come up with stuff that other people haven't thought before because of the way their brains are wired. Having said that, there are techniques, and my colleague Nick Mann is you know, involved in teaching that. And we have a module um, that, on my program that uh, teaches that of actually idea generation. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, you can have natural skill at it. It's a bit like playing a sport, really. You know, if you've got natural ability at it, you can probably find it find it relatively easy. But if you you know if you train a lot and you're told how to do it better and you practice, you'll get you will get better. So um, yes, I think it's one of those things that some people will just find easy because because of the way they're made, the way their heads are wired up. Um, but you can yes, you can learn techniques. No, I don't think okay. anybody can't come up with an idea if you follow a particular way of thinking you know, you'll come up with something um but just i think the the people that are really good at it probably do have natural talent it's like anything you know like mm -hmm. sport, being good at sport being good at an artist you've probably got some inbuilt thing that your genes have given you or your parents have given you that um, allow you to be excel at it um whereas other people probably would have to work a lot harder to get to the same same degree you know same, right. same level that's my my feeling on that one <laughs> okay um so how competitive is the advertising industry and what do you need to succeed okay um to get a a job in advertising is quite competitive it, it has rightly or wrongly it, it has a certain sort of glamour it's always been regarded as quite a sort of prestigious um thing to be involved in um, because it is you know it is, it is interesting it has there are elements of glamour with it you can meet interesting people and you know sometimes you get to meet you know um, important and sort of celebrities in, in mm -hmm. the course of your work so it has a glamour to it 
And therefore it has, yes, traditionally it has been an attractive thing to do. So therefore it is competitive to get in. Um, particularly if you want to get into, um, you know, well-regarded agency that has a great track record, um, you know, producing good creative work or has all the, you know, has prestigious accounts. So yeah, it can, um, it, it, it is, it is competitive. Yeah. Uh, I think. Okay. And so what do you need to succeed? What do you need to be, um, to get into the industry and to be successful? I think the, your, your personal, um, you know, what we call soft skills, the, the skills you have in terms of the way that you relate to people, the way they communicate, mm -hmm. the way that you work as a team, they are very important. And people with, if you like, strong personalities are often come to the fore. So um, people who are perhaps more extrovert, not always, okay. but perhaps more extrovert, um, people who perhaps, you know, like to be leaders, um, uh, people who are persuasive and influential. Now, all of these things, persuasion, influence, leadership, they're not skills, again, you can learn a bit more about them. But again, some people have kind of got them. They feel, mm -hmm. some people feel more confident in terms of their ability to sort of stand in front of a group, lead a group, etc. So all of those are the sort of things that tend to make, um, tend to make uh, people sort of stand out. I mean, charisma, sometimes it's called charisma. There are a lot of charismatic people who work in the, in the advertising industry. They might not always be um, you know, the smartest academically, um, but they probably have something about them, you know, and it's probably to do with the way that they are confident. You know, they have Maybe the way that they more. advertise themselves as well, because at the end of the day, how you present yourself and you're at, you're almost advertising yourself to other people. People have to buy your ideas. They have to yeah. buy you. Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah. It is the yeah. job. Personal branding. You know, it wasn't, it's, it's a phrase that it was a term that's become like prevalent in the last 10 years, but the ability to build yourself a profile and be, be respected, um, to be listened to, um, mm -hmm. all of those things are, are quite important in, in, in this, the industry. All right. Well, thank you very much, Julian. That's been great.